yeah, Michael Kaminsky, who um, kind of reached out to us and wanted to work with us in some capacity. Like we had just signed with the manager already. So, um, but then, yeah, he, he, you know, was like, I'm thinking of starting this label and, you know, I want to work with you guys on this next EP. And Right on, man. Well, uh, I'm Adam. Super uh, stoked to chat with you today. Um, this is about you and your journey in music, and we'll talk about uh, the new album coming out as well. Amazing. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so, I, I the first off, the, the band, what, started in Orlando. Are you originally from, born and raised in Orlando, Florida? Um, I'm from Daytona Beach, Florida, which is about an hour away from Orlando. Um, I've lived in Orlando a long time now. Um, okay. But yeah, the, the band started in Orlando uh, around 2012. <clears throat> okay. But you but you grew up in, in Daytona Beach? Yeah. I, I'm actually uh, kind of funny. I'm the only actual Florida native in the band. Really? So, so everyone yeah. from other states and just landed in Florida? Yeah. So um, Harry and Anthony both met in college and they both went to full sale which is like a private like university in orlando they like specialized in like you know creative fields and like they, they both did uh recording arts and so okay. that's where they met but they're both from actually all of them are from the midwest but um yeah <laughs> boz our bassist and anthony are both from michigan and harry is from indiana and uh scott is actually from michigan as well but he's lived in florida the longest out of the transplants <clears throat> interesting okay yeah so you're the only native floridian yeah <laughs> a, there's a bunch of red wings fans and lions fans there you go <laughs> well tell me about uh growing up in daytona beach and then at what age did you move to orlando um so yeah daytona beach sucks uh if you've, <laughs> <laughs> if you've never been there <laughs> it's uh yeah, you know, honestly, super shot. Um, I I do not. Isn't it like it. a big uh, like spring break place or no? Am I thinking of something totally different? <laughs> no, I mean it. It used to be that was like its whole thing, and like it used to be like a nicer and more of like a tourist like the actual spot in like the eighties, especially like MTV was there. Like a spring break used to. Yeah, be I remember that being the name, right? That people would go there. Yeah. But dude, now it's like, it's super shot. And like, honestly, that whole area, like on the beach and everything, like there's mad homeless people, there's mad drug problems. And like, it's uh, just, yeah, dude, it's. Yeah. All the riffraff just ended up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, especially, and I mean, I grew up on the, like the mainland side, which is, so there's like a river, like a big river that runs between the actual, like there's like a long strip of island on the East coast of Florida that is like beach side. And like, mm -hmm. I grew up on the mainland side. And okay. that's like the real, that's like the real shitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you weren't on the, you weren't on the coastline. No, no. You, yeah. I, you, you, I would have to like, cause I would like ride my bike to the beach as a kid. I would have to like ride over this massive fucking bridge that like one of the huge ones. It was like so hard to ride your bike over it. Usually <laughs> I just walk and then like coast down. Coast down. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, what about music? Do you come from like a musical household or creative family at all? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, my mom and dad both love music a lot. I mean, my dad kind of played acoustic guitar a little bit, um, but like he wasn't really around when I was growing up. But like my mom, like we definitely just listen to music all the time. And um, my mom did have like always kind of diverse taste in music as well. And I guess exposed me to a lot of stuff when I was younger. Um Although she was not a big fan of the rock and metal when I started getting into that. <laughs> so okay. what, team, what, is, you know, but, yeah, what did she listen to? But I mean, a lot of different classic rock, which I still, I love to this day. Honestly, I'm a big fan of all that stuff. Uh, but then also like she was big into classical music too. And like uh, she would like play all that stuff a, a lot. Uh, Mozart, Vivaldi, Bach, and like Strauss, Beethoven, all this stuff. Like she had the CDs, <laughs> I remember. Um, <laughs> So yeah, like uh, you know, uh, I I remember just like yeah, just loving music growing up, but never I no one else really like played instruments. So, like my mom didn't play anything. It it wasn't like I didn't come from like a family of musicians at all. Okay, and where did you start as far as music? Did you like 
guitar early on or <laughs> yeah not super early um i actually didn't start playing guitar until i was like around 15 um and but then yeah i you know kind of got obsessed with it for a while so then i i did that crazy like i was just like i you know you have those couple years when you're i feel like in your late teens where a lot of people will just like practice for like ridiculous amounts of times and then that yeah. was me like once i started getting really into it like i, I could easily sit there for eight ten twelve hours a day sometimes just playing guitar so yeah once you start <laughs> learning a few chords right or maybe a song you just want to keep playing it like a million times oh yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> it, it was like uh the riffs that really started for me like it's not like i i just want like metalcore riffs and like you know like slipknot stuff really is like some of the you know, first kind of stuff i learned on guitar and then yeah just more into the metal <clears throat> Nice. And what about a band? Did you start a band or play in your band or anything uh, before moving to Orlando? Um, not much. I mean, I, I kind of like jammed with some people, but I never really was in too many, I mean, serious bands until like my first one. That was like when I was like 18 or 19 that I did for a couple years, like kind of like a metalcore band. Um, but, you know, it's always like, especially when you're young, like trying to just find people it, for a band is so difficult like people who are on the same page people who mm -hmm. are able to like do it and like don't like flake out like i i remember just being bumped so many times like uh like playing with like a, a decent drummer you meet like for once and like it's like you think it's going good and then they just start flaking on you and like you know right uh, yeah they like to pick the litter right i mean that's the thing if you're the drummer dude it was kind so of, hard everybody wants a drummer band. and they're like oh dude. yeah well i can i have like five other bands i'm messing around with so i'll let you know <laughs> straight up yeah <laughs> for real and they yeah they could pick whatever yeah the best one for real because like when you're especially then like you know the early mid 2000s like trying to do a metalcore band like everyone played fucking guitar and bass yeah. so I, like it was so easy then like it was you know everyone had like the little fucking line six amp and they, sure. oh, that sounds yeah. sick dude <laughs> <laughs> but you but, need yeah. to find that person that can play drums fast enough dude yeah and like yeah play blast beats and stuff yeah, like blast it's beats, hard like you kick, know, it's like sure. yeah so um yeah right. i always find that funny too because it's like you'll you'll hear these bands that stick around forever that have the same three four or five members and it's like to find a core of people that are that all on the same page, like you said, and that willing to just give up everything to do this, this one thing is so rare, right? It's like, no, we're, we're going to, everyone that has the same passion to, to make this band succeed is, is kind of rare to find. Yeah. It's honestly amazing to me, like how, there yeah like especially when you're like a five piece band like you know i right. i really see the benefits i feel like now a lot of times there are like a lot of like newer up and coming bands that have only have maybe two or three actual members like you know i feel like that's becoming more common mm -hmm. and then there's like just fill-ins on tour or whatever because it's easier <laughs> like, yeah it's like, easier to keep people around that way i would imagine yeah you know so um i get that but yeah it, it's it is really though it's it is an amazing and kind of beautiful thing though when you do have those bands as like five people and they're together for 20 years or right. in our case 10 years now so and now i know it's mean, gonna say you guys have been doing it right i mean to, yeah you, you we, found we, those people that are willing to stick it out and yeah you know, like i said thing. they started in 2012 like the original three like harry anthony and scott but like the this lineup that we have the five of us has been since 2014 now so yeah it's i was thinking about that the other day how it's been a decade <laughs> wow um so what took you to orlando did you go there for school or just to get out of daytona beach um yeah well it's funny i like i moved around a bit and then like um i actually i lived in new york for two years like upstate new york in the sticks uh, i was like doing it was like my metalcore band like we kind of like relocated we like had some connections there it fizzled out i moved back home and like, I was like staying with my mom again. And I, that's actually when I met Harry, and Scott and Anthony and um, like, you know, just started hanging out and uh, they all lived in a house together and in Orlando. And um, I, uh, I was like trying to move out of my mom's place. And so was your uh, mom in Orlando at that time? Like, how did you, she was there? in um, Deland. Um, I met Harry actually, because I, I was in this, 
it's funny they love to talk about it tease me about it but i was i was like just wanted to be in a band and do something i was like in a pop punk phase i was like i joined a pop punk band like doing vocals <laughs> and like it was really shitty like that's bad. awesome like, i do like, I, love pop punk. I don't care i would never make fun of you for that i i, I, do, I it wasn't that it was pop punk but it was that the band was bad <laughs> like, oh, okay <laughs> yeah they, they were bad um but like, you know, I, that's how I met Harry's like, cause he, you know, just grad or he hadn't even actually graduated school yet. He was like recording like local bands for like, you know, a hundred bucks for a song, like mixed, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Much, like, you know? Um, and so that's actually how I met him. Cause those, those kids in that pop punk band, like met them at a show or something. And then that's, yeah. And then <laughs> I met Harry and like, you know, we hit it off. Cause like all the, I was like, older than like most of those kids by like five or six years and like we're mm -hmm. all the same age me harry and scott and they like we were recording at that house over so getting like capstan house um and then yeah so like we just started hanging out and then it was only a few months later when like someone else moved out of the house um uh, and so they needed another roommate and then I, I moved in there with those guys and then that's when we were like started practicing all the time playing shows all the time writing all the time because like the whole band lived together um for at least like a year and a half to two years i think all five of us because it was like a five-bedroom house we all split together so um and we used to throw shows there too all the time and like actually had some pretty cool shows in our living well, room at so, the house wow yeah yeah we it was actually kind of like known as a little bit of a venue like we had touring bands come through there and play there multiple times like more diy like touring bands and like we had like over a hundred people at our house before like doing actual shows like house shows it was Jeez. really cool yeah. <laughs> it was on like the end of a cul-de-sac like with woods around it and like our two neighbors were like cool uh, like one of them like worked nights so they like weren't even there and then so yeah we, we it got pretty rowdy man it was it was pretty crazy we, we, so, we had a lot of cool bands play there too like like seaway played in our fucking living room like it was wow. pretty cool yeah that's awesome that is awesome <laughs> yeah oh uh, so you said you joined the band in 2014 were you on the seasonal depressions ep or were you yeah after that so okay. I, I wrote um a little bit of guitar for that most of it was written like when i joined the band and then i wrote some uh because it was funny actually i i joined the band like uh playing bass and boz was actually playing guitar because he just moved down from indiana to like join the band as well uh -huh. um and so he had joined uh to play guitar and then we switched uh from because he's just a better bassist and i was a better guitarist so like a few months later after i joined we decided to switch and then um yeah so i wrote some of the bass lines actually on seasonal depression on a couple oh, songs wow. yeah um but then yeah then after that we like i said seasonal depression came out like a few months after i moved into the house like um like i said most of it was done but I, I recorded a few parts for it. And then after that was like when we started the writing process of like, yeah, like what would be cultural divide and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay. And then that's when you were full uh, all in. And then you, did, yeah, yeah that's when I, out, I, was... I started writing guitar and writing more of the instrumentals and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, then we started doing a, a little more of the, I guess I would say like more post hardcore ish, like on that EP, like cultural divide stuff, kind of. But mm -hmm. yeah, <clears throat> and that's the uh, the EP that got attention from people, right? You got a manager and everything from that EP. Yeah, yeah, that was like kind of some of the initial buzz. Um, Wax poetic from that EP still like it stays our number one song on Spotify. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that that was I guess what really started it all because like we had just started touring and like getting a little bit of traction. I think we had done like basically our second full U S tour was around like the, re or the release. It was just right after we released cultural divide. Like we went on our second tour. It was like the first time we toured the West coast or uh, any of that. So. <clears throat> and how did you like, was it just playing a bunch of venues or did you have this, like was the internet helpful at that point yet or uh yeah i mean it was so like the first two tours we did were super diy like um like boz 
our bassist, like he booked most of the shows like with the help of like some of the other bands we toured with it was just like through like facebook and like you know people you knew and like yeah yeah, yeah. because like when we we played some house shows on those first like two tours you know uh even actually later tours than that but um (laughs) yeah so it, it was very just like straight diy and um it but there was even on the first tour even there were even though the shows had i think the biggest show on the first tour had maybe like 10 people i swear to god um but there were there were people who came out that like knew the lyrics to songs because they'd heard it on the internet and like there was like so like a very small amount of like anticipation from a few people in a couple random cities of us like going out on the road for the first couple times and like um the very first show we played in an apartment on uh, on our first door it, it was in an apartment on the uh, virginia tech campus like in, in like one of the dorm apartments this kid had like shows there and oh, it was, yeah dude, first show we played out of state like first show of the tour in an apartment and i remember um there were two people who knew the lyrics to can't lie around remembering everything and I'm singing along with Anthony we like played it acoustic and uh I was like oh this is really cool um so yeah it, it was you know they, they were tiny but it, it was cool because even from the very first moment like you know in a handful of places there were always fans there <laughs> nice and because after you had done Culture Divide you that's when you were one of what two bands that signed with Adventure Cat Records. That label was kind of created, right? Based off of you, your yeah. band. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, randomly enough, it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. Michael Kaminsky, who um, kind of reached out to us and wanted to work with us in some capacity. Like we had just signed with a manager already. So, um, but then, yeah, he, he you know, was like i'm thinking of starting this label and you know i want to work with you guys on this next ep and um so that was pretty cool honestly we, we loved how the way that worked out and it was kind of like a, a nice you know stepping stone into some other stuff as well and it was uh yeah just cool, a cool experience <clears throat> and you guys said you did a full album right or was, was it an, it was ep after it was an ep by? yeah it was an ep oh okay Mm-hmm. it was just the one ep with the adventure cat and then we um oh then you went we, to, and did fearless right you, or yeah. you put out another you did a another record another ep after that one right by yourselves and then you did the sun fearless uh no um the, the last independent one we did was the well because we did do the acoustic ep that was mm-hmm. um before cultural divide but uh, cultural divide was the last independent release because then um the next ep after that was in the wake of our discord that was under adventure cat yeah and then and then after that um was our first uh full was the first restless, album yeah restless okay. heart keep running so uh which was yeah under fearless as you mentioned <laughs> and then you're doing the newest records under fearless as well right the one coming out because you've been with yeah. them for the, this is your third album with them yeah yeah this is actually yeah the last one on our contract um or i mean you know there's like an option for a fourth but it's like some crazy thing that like you know it it doesn't happen so um yeah it's uh uh gonna be our last record um it's been really great working with them their team is like amazing um so like we're, we're really excited with the way this release of this newest record has been going so far um it's been cool we're kind of like trying some different stuff and um yeah like a longer rollout and release plan so uh it's been getting a pretty good reaction so far though so yeah i i think the songs i've heard off the album are awesome i want to talk to you about yeah about the album i just curious quick question about uh, you know getting signed to fearless and everything i mean when as a kid growing up um listening to the bands and in you know, when I was younger, it was like if you saw a label, you'd look at the bands and then you would it, it was like if, you know, um, <clears throat> Victory p- put out a record from somebody. And you're like, you don't know the band, but you're like, oh, well, if they signed them. Then they're probably yeah. awesome. Like, I mean, Fearless was one of those those labels. I mean, to, yeah. to have them reach out to you or you tell me about getting you know signed to them and, and how that process. Was. 
Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that's exactly you said it so well. It's like we talked about it in terms of like, oh, dream label and everything. Cause yeah, it's just like there's that instant sort of uh credibility you get like being on a label like that, right? You know, yeah. People take you seriously and uh yeah, they know your music has gotta be good. Like at least, like you said, like I mean, God, back in the day, Victory had all the best bands <laughs> um but yeah you know it was it because honestly fearless kind of came out last minute too we were kind of talking to a couple other labels um in depth for at least a little while and then fearless approached us the, uh like kind of last uh last minute sort of and um so yeah it, it was it was very cool very like you know it's just a huge uh, everything else aside it is just it's like a nice you know life goal to be able to say that like you signed to this label and like you got to put out records under like you know a really cool like classic label like that you know like it just it it's it's cool to know that you know it, you just a everything else like that stands the test of time right uh -huh. yeah it's like uh, how about you know it's like what a validation right you're like okay mm -hmm. i've been doing this for this long and a label that has put out all these other great bands and bands that i look up to and um they i'm also my name's on that roster like yeah, yeah it's, it's just like, cool i made it like this is rad like looking at your own album and seeing their the name on the back right and then you have three albums with them which is un really unheard of now i mean usually bands will sign one one album deal and the label will be like okay let's see how this goes but to say hey we, we we're gonna give you three albums that's massive yeah and like i said it's been a great experience working with them too so it's uh we're feel very blessed very fortunate <clears throat> I love the the song. I've heard like I think the first six or so or six songs off the album, um, and they're all like very different from one another. I mean, you've got like Bloom is a very like ballady song. Um, uh, Misery scene is it has the acoustic guitar in the beginning, and then um, Heart to Heart. It's got like this electronic -y feel. Even the newest one, Empire, has like this kind of electronic -y, like did it like synth sounds in the middle of the songs. Like, I, I feel like the, it's all, it's, if you, if just listening to be described, you think it'd be all over the place, but it makes sense and it comes together. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, this out, is this album totally different? Like going into this album, was it totally different than the other ones? Like, were you guys just going to try to do something different? Yeah, no. Well, first of all, thank you. So I think that's right on like what we're looking to kind of express or convey with like the music like this album is um it's just a, a big the most varied range of like genres and sounds that, that we have done as a band um we feel that this album is most like authentically genuinely but also uniquely us you know um and yeah that that's like we wanted to basically for this just like write the best songs possible um while like not paying any regard to like oh because of who we are we shouldn't write a metalcore song or we shouldn't write a you know and i, I on the album there's a lot more stuff there's like a kind of like poppy synth wave track and like it gets more varied all over the place there's like a uh folky almost bluegrassy type of like acoustic oh, driven track yeah there's it's it's 18 songs and it's just very diverse throughout um and yeah we we just feel like the songs are good by themselves like i said if you just like listen to one song it's like oh that's a good song it makes sense whatever like but um <clears throat> because like a lot of times like the way we used to write before was like um we went through a phase where we would do a lot of like untraditional song structure and sort of like more unorthodox like weird riffs like kind of going into other parts and everything like that and like with it this 
came from more of a songwriting focus, mm-hmm. which al- allowed us to be the most creative because of the fact that like we love so many different genres of music so much. We want to write these different types of songs. And we think that even though <laughs> some people might think it's a little weird, we think all the songs are good. And we think that it all falls under the umbrella of a big genre sphere that people generally like most of it, if not all of it. Right. <clears throat> no, a hundred percent. I feel like now a days more than ever, if with, you know, streaming and playlists and you don't need to kind of stay in one lane. Like when I was younger, I'm, 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 I'm much, I'm older than you all. So it's like, when I was growing up, it was like, if you listen to punk, like that's all you could listen to. Like, God forbid somebody found out that you didn't listen to a punk. Like, if you yeah. listen to Rancid and Op Ivy and all these bands, it was like, that was all. That was all you could care about. They, it was, if you, if somebody saw a whatever, you know, green, like Red Hot Chili Pepper album in your collection, it'd be like, oh, you'd get roasted, right? I mean, it's, it's like you have Dude. to only like those bands. And it was the same thing with metal in the mid 2000s. Like I remember distinctly when it got very uncool to like, like you could not like Slipknot anymore. Oh yeah. Like you, you know, you could not like you can't even to this day. You probably you will get some hate in certain circles for saying you like new metal. Like well, it, it's just like it was. It became very uncool. And like uh, there's so much hate and elitism and like just genre specific. Like yeah, like, uh, I mean metal gets bad about it too like a, a lot like i said but just like i remember being in the death metal phase and then uh-huh. like yeah it's all every shirt and like every and all you listen to was death your metal. whole identity was death metal right yeah, and <laughs> yeah I, I, my yeah. buddy was like that growing up he was like cradle of filth and whatever you know <laughs> cattle be cat like he, yeah he told him like hey man like check but then he'd be the guy that also had like a smashing pumpkins record in his cds and he would just bury it in there but um <laughs> yeah dude but I, it's, I also it's like one of my favorite bands of all time is the death metal band black dolly murder i'm a huge fucking oh, yeah, fan Deep Dive, all, all their discography i love that band but also one of my other favorite bands of all time is made it for it like i it's okay <laughs> like yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> right it's exactly it's okay and that's how people's playlists are now it no one care no one thinks about it like that very like binary like okay i only like these things it's like you look at a lineup now. I mean, it's whatever Lana Del Rey and on one end, and whoever you know, some other band, a Radiohead is on the other side. It's like, yeah. wait, what? You know, or you know, yeah, just like now, it's it, so all over the place nowadays. Yeah, one of the coolest thing I think they did it as a tour with some small dates, but like Corn with Spirit Box, and then the rapper Denzel Curry was on it too. Like that was oh, like yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was like so cool. Yeah, it's like <laughs> there's not it, there's so many blends of genres and sounds and music now that it's I don't feel like it's all about it's like what's good and what's not good. So that's what I love what you guys are doing with this this album because if if I read, um. Just okay, you know, Capstan's a, a hardcore band. Like, if you go on your Wikipedia, it's like melodic hardcore, post hardcore. And then if I clicked on Bloom, I'd be like, is this the, is this the band I'm supposed to be listening? Like, you know what I mean? But it's a rad song and it's not. But then you listen to even like Empire, it has like the, it's heavy, it has like the synth sounds in it, but then it's heavy. There's all, obviously, you have heavy songs, but I love that you guys are doing just like, this huge palette of of sounds it's like who cares we're we we wrote the song and it's 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 awesome we're gonna put it out anyway instead of being like well is this our is this our sound i don't know i just think what you're doing is great oh yeah no i i appreciate that that's awesome that's exactly right so i mean yeah it was cool I, another thing we did on this record like i said 18 songs so like one thing i had we'd never done like i said like we, we get heavy uh frequently but there's a short song on the record with no clean vocals on it. I was like, I just want to make that a point to do a song that's just like straight heavy the whole time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then you'd hear that song and then you go into something like misery yep. scene and it's acoustic guitars and not that it's like a, like singy singy, but it's, you know, clean yeah. vocals. And, um, but I, yeah, man, I, I think the, the album is awesome. You're doing a tour with can't swim, I think coming up or yeah um yeah uh, can't swim in belmont um we're doing that uh 
it's in May into June. Um, I actually also play bass for Belmont Live, so I'm going to be doing double sets. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Yeah, I've been touring with Belmont actually for like two years. I've, I've done quite a few tours with them, um, just like doing bass for them live. <clears throat> Rad. I've had uh, uh, Chris, the singer of Can't Swim. Yeah, uh, Chris yeah. is awesome. He's the man. He's so funny. I've, yeah, I've had him on twice on this <laughs> podcast. He's great. Yeah, he cracks me up, dude. So that's that's gonna be a rad tour. Um, and then the album coming out in May. Yeah, Hello? May twenty fourth, the mosaic. Yep. Awesome, man. Well, I uh, appreciate your time today, Joseph. Thank you so much for for hanging out. Hell yeah! No, it's uh, really been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, man. Um, well, uh, I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Uh learn to do as many things yourself as you possibly can pick up and take notes on and i know you want to focus on just probably making your art and writing music but the unfortunate thing is it's probably not going to be enough today especially so do it all <laughs> you got to learn to record you got to learn to do social media well as much as you can learn that skill i i don't have that one but yeah you know you gotta you gotta cover all your bases but don't neglect the art still gotta focus there too <laughs> good luck Bring it back,